Well, welcome back to this final in the series of the Bible according to Hollywood. Uh, we've been on a tour of uh, Noah, the story of Noah and the Ark, um, the time of Moses and the Exodus, Exodus, gods and kings. Last week, uh, the lost Ark, thanks to Indiana Jones. And today, well, it's quite hard to say directly because the life of Brian isn't um, supposed to be a film about the Bible as such. In fact, that's how they, I guess they got round the um, blasphemy laws. Um, it is a film about Brian of Nazareth. It's meant to be a colossal joke. There's no serious attempt to engage with the biblical material. So why include it in this series? And yet actually it is very clearly a parody of the life of Jesus. And even as you, uh, I read to you some of the, the names of scenes in the film, uh, you'll be able to discern uh, some of the links. The three wise men with a bad sense of direction is the first scene. That's uh, Brian's birth is, um, is hailed. Um, and then um, Brian denies messianic attributes as people attribute healing miracles to him, feeding of a crowd, and think, therefore, he must be the Messiah. To which his mother replies, he's not the Messiah, he's a very naughty boy, uh, a line perhaps you remember. And then we come to Pontius Pilate, uh, then we come to a crucifixion. And the reason the song, by the way, was so offensive, in case you're wondering, is because in the film, uh, they are whistling along, always look on the bright side, as Brian dies on the cross. That's the answer to execution and to death. Just whistle and uh, look on the bright side of things. Uh, the whole thing, it treats Jesus, uh, the biblical story, life, death and eternity as a colossal joke. And it caused a huge stir when it was first released uh, in 1979. Um, it was banned in 39 different local authorities in the UK. That's extraordinary to think of now, isn't it? We're so open-minded, you can't imagine almost anything being banned. But back in 1979, it was too much. Um, they either imposed an outright ban or gave it an 18 certificate, uh, effectively preventing the film from being shown. Some countries banned it, Ireland and Norway. Although, according to Wikipedia, the advertising uh, made the best of this and they advertised it in Sweden with the slogan, so funny, it was banned in Norway. So, um, uh, it was a controversial film. I know, I thought that was funny as well. Um, it was a controversial film. And, and maybe some of you think that banning it or disapprove, disapproving of it is just typical of Christians who don't have a sense of, of humour. You know, why can't we just see this is a bit of light-hearted banter uh, after all, Monty Python, often hilarious. I love the, the dead parrot sketch along with the, the rest of them. Um, why can't we just look on the bright side of the film instead of being so negative and, and typically serious? And so I wanted to um, begin this lunchtime by just reminding us that the Bible affirms fun and goodness. We're on the handouts. You'll see I've given you some different biblical texts. And the Bible affirms that God is the creator of everything that's good. He gives us everything that we enjoy, and that includes um, goodness and joy and humour. James writes, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Everything we enjoy, everything that's fun, comes from God. And Paul, um, speaking to the Athenians, tells them that the God who made the world and everything in it gives to all mankind life and breath and everything, everything that we enjoy comes from him. And so the Bible isn't against um, enjoyment or humour and it's actually not even against comedy and sarcasm. So I was just trying to think of places where the Bible itself is quite sarcastic and, and it's not difficult to find examples so um, I was reminded of um, Nebuchadnezzar's court when he uh, decides that everyone must worship a statue de um, devoted to him, the king of Babylon, and he has this whole entourage of musicians playing a special tune, and when you hear the special tune, you're supposed to bow down. And the Bible tells it in a, in a really amusing way. It's obviously meant to poke fun at the pompous um, ritual of King Nebuchadnezzar's court. Um, or um, you can think of um, Elijah taunting the prophets of Baal, when their god, this fake god that the, the Canaanites worship, is unable to show up to light a barbecue. And Elijah calls out to them, you know, what's wrong? Maybe, um, maybe Baal's deaf, shout a bit louder. 
uh, maybe Baal's on the loo and he's in space and so he can't answer. So the Bible is, is okay with being rude and cheeky um, and even ironic and sarcastic and using humour to ridicule something stupid. So humour is okay. And yet the Bible does warn us that humour can be dangerous and folly, foolishness and scoffing can actually be very, very dangerous things. I was looking um, through the book of Proverbs, which has much to say about these two characters, the fool and the scoffer. And it seems to me that the, the life of Brian is an epitome, really, of both of those combined. Whimsical fun and scoffing at God and at Jesus and the things uh, concerning him. Let me just give you an example of the kind of scoffing, and then we'll look at the, the warning so, um, for example, um, on the Sermon on the Mount, um, Jesus is speaking and you hear a little bit of him and then the camera pans, pans back uh, to the back of the crowd where Brian and his friends are gathering. Speak up, she says. They can't quite hear him. Um, Blessed are the, um, the peacemakers. What was that? Blessed is the cheesemakers, I think. Uh, what's so special about the cheesemakers? Well, obviously, this isn't meant to take literally. It refers to manufacturers of dairy products in general. Ho, ho. So, you know, one of the most famous bits of teaching of Jesus, hilariously misheard, and then a little um, note of it's all a matter of interpretation, really, that you can't take cheese making literally. Well, just a bit of fun, perhaps, but a bit of fun made of perhaps the most profound piece of moral teaching in the history of the world, um, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Uh, what about his, his miracles? Well, um, there's a, 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 sign where, a scene where Brian is thought to um, be a, a, a messiah. And so the crowd say to him, speak to us, master, speak to us. Um, go away, says Brian. A blessing, a blessing. How should we go away, master? Oh, just go away, leave me alone. Give us a sign, give us a sign. Um, and then um, one of the characters says in a parody of the feeding of the 5,000 in, in the Bible, your people have walked many miles to be with you. They're weary and haven't eaten. It's not my fault they haven't eaten. There's no food on this high mountain. Well, what about those juniper bushes over there? And so they go and they find that the juniper, bush, juniper bushes have got juniper berries on them, because that's what juniper bushes have. And so they say, a miracle, a miracle, and so on. So what a laugh, the feeling of the 5,000. Maybe there was just fruit trees that already had fruit on. Ho, 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 ho. It's just all a laugh. Um, and then um, I think really one of the, the least funny scenes of all that's supposed to be funny uh, is the crucifixion scene that the, a bunch of criminals about to be executed one of whom is brian um, are passing out of their cell next crucifixion yes good out of the door line on the left one cross each next crucifixion yes out of the door line on the left one cross each next crucifixion oh no freedom freedom Oh, yes, freedom for me. They sort of hadn't done anything, so I could go free and, and live on an island somewhere. Oh, okay, that's, that's jolly good. Well, off you go then. No, I'm only pulling your leg. It's crucifixion, really. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Yeah, I think, like me, you're struggling to see the humour in that. Uh, this is scoffing uh, folly about something that actually counts. And the Bible warns us, even though we can enjoy fun and banter, that banter can be a dangerous thing. That reading that Helen read to us there on the bottom of the sheet, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. No sense really in the film that there is any fear of God. In fact, there's any God to be thought about at all. Maybe the film was slightly conscious of the senses, maybe slightly conscious of the British blasphemy laws, they carefully made it about Brian rather than about Jesus. But no sense of trembling before a God who may rule this world and to whom we'll have to give account. Just all a laugh. And Proverbs warns us of, of folly, this um, character personified as a, as a woman. She, she's calling out foolishly, in the street saying, come over here, come over here. Um, I've got folly for you. You can enjoy a bit of folly. And the, the, the punchline, the man is taken in, he goes into her house. He doesn't know that the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of shale. 
the grave. See, if the world were just a laugh and nothing counted, then maybe we could laugh at everything. But the Bible says that there are matters of life and death, and just to laugh those off, uh, well, it is a very dangerous trap. And there's lots of proverbs I could quote. It's worth um, going at home onto the BibleGateway.com or something like that and just type in the fool and looking at many references, more than I can share this lunchtime. But here are a couple of them. Let a man meet a she-bear robbed of her cubs rather than a fool in his folly. Uh, more dangerous even than an angry bear separated from her cubs. A dangerous thing. Why is laughing so dangerous? Well, because it laughs about things that actually really matter. Now, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to um, depart from the handout because I've just decided to... I was trying deliberating this all morning and I was late with my handout for Alan um, between two options and I'm afraid I'm going to go for the other one than what we've got printed. But turn over to point three. Death isn't that funny. And the crucifixion even less so. I was going to explain that the crucifixion of Jesus isn't a laughing matter. It was a very serious thing um, and it wasn't possible to whistle along, I suggest. I think that's actually a point almost too obvious to need to be made. Um, There are some things that just aren't that funny, are there? You see the reports of ISIS um, on the the television, um, turning up in a village and murdering everyone. It probably doesn't occur to many of us to whistle lightheartedly at that point, I would suggest. Of course, it is popular at funerals. Um, According to one um, survey on the BBC News, did an article last week, if you saw it, last Tuesday, on how um, funerals are happier these days. According to one survey, um, always look on the bright side is the top playlist at funerals. Um, And I think that may be the case. People like to go out with something, you know, something fun. I've been to several funerals um, over the last two years, and one thing I've noticed they've all got in common, um, no one laughs at funerals. It's actually slightly awkward when um, the deceased has left comedy music, which we have to sit through, while everyone is bawling their eyes out, because death is a horrible thing. I think it's almost too obvious to need to be proved that execution of an innocent man isn't a laugh. But actually, it almost could be a laugh, in the sense of it it almost deserves to be mocked if Jesus were a fake. I think that's that's the ultimate question, isn't it? Because the Bible isn't afraid to use humour to mock those that are a fake. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, was a fake, and so we'll send him up. Um, The prophets of Baal were a fake, so we'll joke about the inability of their god, Baal, to lift a finger to light a barbecue. And actually, some people um, mocked Jesus, not just in the film, but even at the time, because they thought he was a fake. Um, Those, the chief priests, the scribes, mocked him, saying... He saved others, he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel, let him come now down from the cross, we'll believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he desires him. Because he said, I'm the son of God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Well, if Jesus was a fake, maybe he deserves that. Um, Messianic pretensions, faked miracles, uh, Profound teaching that he didn't live by himself as a hypocrite. And finally, a death that shows the whole thing to be a failure. Well, mock, if that's the case. But one of the passages in the Bible that most proves that Jesus' death is not a fake is what happened three days later um, on Easter Sunday. And I wonder if you can turn, I'm sorry this isn't on the sheet, but turn to page 1157 to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1157. And the beginning of the chapter, Paul rehearses the central truths of the Christian message. Verse 3, I delivered to you as of first importance what I received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. He was buried... He was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and that he appeared 
And then he lists a whole series of resurrection appearances of Jesus. People able to testify that Jesus was alive again. Then look down at verse 12. If Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there's no resurrection of the dead? If there's no resurrection of the dead, Christ hasn't been raised. And if Christ hasn't been raised, our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We're even found to be misrepresenting God because we said that he raised Christ, whom he didn't raise, if the dead are not raised. Verse 17, if Christ hasn't been raised, your faith is futile. You're still in your sins. Those who've fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all people most to be pitied. You see, if it was a fake, if Jesus died and it was a failure, if he died and it was the end then Christianity is worth mocking. And you sense in that scenario, the Apostle Paul would be the first to applaud the film. Well done at exposing Jesus, the charlatan. But, Paul says, Christ has been raised from the dead. Um, And then I want you to look over to um, chapter 15, verse verse 32. What do I gain if, humanly speaking, I fought wild beasts at Ephesus if the dead are not raised? Let let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. And it it just occurred to me that that verse is is really exactly where the song, Always Look on the Bright Side, comes from. Um, If we eat and drink and that's the end and there's nothing beyond, there's no resurrection, there's no judgment, there's just this short life, well, you might as well just make the best of what you've got, because that's all. And you might as well just try and smile and, and laugh. Um, as, the, 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 as the song goes, always look on the bright side of death, just before you draw your terminal breath. Life's a piece of shit when you look at it. Life's a laugh and death's a joke, it's true. You'll see it's all a show. Keep on laughing as you go. Just remember that the laugh laugh is on you. It's all you could say, isn't it? If this life is all, and then you die, and that's it, we'll make the best of it. Jesus is a joke, the crucifixion's a joke, there's no resurrection, and all we've got left is comedy. We sense it doesn't quite work, and when it's played at the funeral, no one will actually be laughing. But it's, you know, makes sense as a philosophy, and make the best of things philosophy. And that quote, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die, but I just want to share with you, this is what I was debating, is this too complicated for a Tuesday? Uh, I just wanted to share with you my discovery of where that verse comes from. Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. It's actually a quote from the prophet Isaiah. And you'll see this little footnote there um, that takes us back to Isaiah chapter, um, uh, Isaiah chapter 22. And let me just read it to you, no need to turn to it. In that day, the Lord of hosts called for weeping and mourning, baldness and wearing sackcloth. God had declared his judgment. God had declared the seriousness of our sin. And on the day that God said weeping and mourning, instead, joy and gladness, killing oxen, slaughtering sheep, eating flesh and drinking wine, let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. So actually the the context in the Bible of this quote is God says judgment's coming and people decide to laugh it off. Uh, One day you'll face your creator in judgment and they decide to throw a party. So it's not actually just the kind of nihilism of people who don't think there's any meaning. It's the defiance of people thinking that they can escape uh, any accountability with God. And if there's no resurrection, you probably can. No accountability beyond the grave. So in the case of Monty Python, you make the film, it's a bit controversial, it gets banned. That gives it a kind of super famous status. Even more people want to watch it, now it's banned. It becomes popular and some people vote it the best comedy film of all time, presumably because of the controversy. And so you die at an old age and you've done well and, and you're rich on the back of it and that's it. You've mocked God and it didn't count. But if there's a judgment day, uh, if Jesus rose again 
to prove there's life beyond death, and there's life beyond death for all of us, and we'll meet God the other side of death, then actually it matters how we treat him. Um, Mr. Frisbee singing around the cross says, Life is quite absurd, and death's the final word. You must always face the curtain with a bow. Forget about your sin. Give the audience a grin. Enjoy it. It's your last chance anyhow. But that's not true if there's a resurrection and a judgment. Our sin does matter. The day of accounting before God very much counts. And to laugh it off, well, that's what they did in Isaiah's day. Let's throw a party. Let's pretend it's all light-hearted. Let's whistle along. And God says, beware the scoffer. Beware the fool. He says, come in, come in, come and enjoy some folly with me. It's all a laugh. But actually, death is in her house. Um, her guests are in the depths of the grave. Um, I'm all for laughing at a funny film. Please invite me to one. But I didn't find this a particularly funny film um, because it laughs at things that matter. Uh, and Jesus' death and resurrection tells us that sin is a problem, that salvation is our greatest need, and that judgment day beyond the grave is a reality. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for... Uh, the many good things in the Bible that we can praise you for. Thank you for fun and enjoyment and happiness and even humour and sarcasm and irony. But Lord, thank you for warning us when scoffers come, the fool comes, and ridicule something that's actually very serious. Thank you for reminding us that because Jesus rose from the dead, he was not a joke. Judgment Day is not a joke. His death on the cross is not a joke. Uh, Lord, would none of us um, choose this song at our funeral, not just because it's inappropriate, but because instead we want to substitute it for a hymn that praises you for your forgiveness and for the life after death that Jesus' resurrection proves. For Jesus' sake, amen.